course, uh, this morning, uh, I was thinking this is like one of the hardest messages, I guess, I would ever have to speak, preach, you know, what has happened in our nation. I know some of you uh, were probably around at the last day of infamy, uh, December 7th, 1941. I wasn't here then. But uh, it's sad that somebody would have to live through two of them because one of them is bad enough. But uh, the tragedy that has uh, befallen our nation, I want to say just a few things first, and we're going to look at a, a passage of Scripture I think is very pertinent. Uh, I want to say that I've really been uh, blessed by our president. Uh, you know, whatever you want to think of him, I, thought, I think he's been doing a, 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 about the best a job as he could do under these circumstances. And we need to pray for him. We need to pray for the, uh, the military leaders, those people who are going to be making decisions. You know, I, the place I work in, and I'm sure some of you have heard this, you know, we're ready to just start nuking Afghanistan and everything else. You know, everybody wants to do this. And I'm not a military person. I don't know what we should do militarily, but uh, there are those who do. And we need to pray for those men and women who make these decisions, who understand the nature of warfare and these things. We need to lift them up in prayer. It is biblical for a nation to defend itself. It's not wrong to think that, you know, well, we're going to go and have a war after the kind of aggression that's been happening. Uh, but uh, we need to pray for those in, in decision-making positions when it comes to this. And we need to pray for the, uh, certainly for the victims of the families, uh, the families of the victims, rather, who were uh, killed in these attacks. I imagine there's been a lot of believers in there. Probably there's a lot of Christians in that World Trade Center, maybe in the Pentagon. So uh, we need to pray for those families. And we need to pray, and we haven't heard much of this, but we need to pray for the families of those people living in those nations that are going to be under attack from us because there's a lot of people living there that don't even know what the World Trade Centers are. I mean, in, in these nations, these third world nations, that people are living in, in some, some of them in abject poverty and they have no idea or inclination of really exactly what's going on. So uh, many innocent people tend to or stand to lose a lot we need to pray for this whole thing and most of all pray for a quick resolution and for peace uh, and for our soldiers, of course, and our, our, our armed services. Having said that, you know, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm thankful I'm an American. I thank God I was born in this nation. And I've heard a lot of things said by, it seems, boy, I, I never knew we had so many experts on everything. <laughs> When something like this happens, it seems they could find 24 hours a day, seven day a week of experts on something. And some of them you wonder where they got their expertise, but uh, they're there. And uh, everybody's saying all kinds of things about all kinds of stuff. And I've heard people say that, uh, especially from the religious realm and preachers and ministers and different kinds of religions talking about God and what he would do and what he wouldn't do and what he can do and what he can't do. Uh, God can do anything he wants to do. And it's something that we need to understand that the tragedy that happened to our nation wasn't an accident. It didn't happen because we were just sort of like hanging around and all of a sudden somebody just picked on us. But God is a sovereign God. And he sees things and he knows things. And, you know, I love this nation. I love America. And I would do anything for her, but America has been guilty of many things. And I hope and pray that as this thing has happened, and I believe it has, woke a whole lot of people up. There's a lot of people say praying that maybe haven't prayed in a long time. And hopefully they'll keep praying. And there's a lot of people saying, God bless America. And that's good. God has blessed America. But has America blessed God? If you turn with me, if you have a Bible, to Second Chronicles, a passage that I'm sure is being expounded upon in churches all over this nation. Sister Lori gave us a, a little sign that she had made, said, pray for America, and had Second Chronicles 714 on. I said, well, that's what I'm preaching on. 
But we're not going to start with 2 Chronicles 7.14. We're going to start with 2 Chronicles 7.12. It's always good to read a couple verses before and after any verse. To understand the nature of this promise by God. God has made a lot of promises and we like to read His promises and stand on His promises, but we never quite understand the conditions of His promise. Some of His promises have conditions. The context of this passage of Scripture was that King Solomon had just finished building the temple. Remember, King David, the greatest, one of the greatest kings, perhaps the greatest king that Israel had had, wanted to build a place of worship for God, and God said, David, you can't do it because you're a man of blood. You have blood on your hands. So God chose his son Solomon to build this temple in Jerusalem, and it was a magnificent temple. Somebody somewhere, I think Sister Karen one time, gave me a tape that where they talked about the, uh, the, the wealth of that temple, the gold and the silver and all the things that were in that temple that were so valuable. It was a beautiful place. Solomon built it. Uh, and it was a magnificent place, and Solomon had, they had a great dedication ceremony you can read about here, and uh, all of Solomon prayed, and the glory of God came down and filled the temple, and the priest couldn't stand. It was a wonderful, wonderful dedication. And in verse 12 of chapter 7 of Second Chronicles, it says this, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard your prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice, this temple that Solomon had built. And listen to what God says. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, wait a minute. God, you would... Shut up heaven? You would send pestilence? You would bring the locusts to devour the land? Well, I, I heard the other day, I heard a preacher on TV saying, saying God wouldn't do anything like that. Or God wouldn't allow anything like that. You see, God was very clear to His people what he expected of them. He was very precise and very certain. He didn't speak in veiled terminology. He didn't hide his words in mysterious uh, typology or anything like that. But he came out and he said, if you obey me, I'll bless you. If you disobey me, I will allow you to suffer things. The word says it's a loving father that chastises his children. If you have a child and they're about to step in front of a train, you would want to take them and pull them back and let them know in no uncertain terms that that was not something they ought to do. We don't like to think of God as being someone who would allow tragedy. But He's very clear with His chosen people, Israel. We're not even Israel. I mean, we're a nation who has built, found, founded its nation on precepts and laws and, and God's Word. Our founding fathers, even though some of them might not have been fully Christian or quite believe like we do, they crafted the, the, the core documents of our existence on the Word of God. Yet we have turned from that foundation as a nation. And if God would allow these things to happen to His people, Israel, what would He do with our nation? Listen to what He says. And this is the verse that so many have quoted and so many are standing on. And it's a true verse because I believe there is hope for our nation. But listen to what He says. If my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, we have a nation 
full of people that are seeking the face of God right now. You see God bless America everywhere. Pray for America everywhere. People that wouldn't give God two thoughts before this are praying. That's good. That's good. I'm glad more people are praying. There was one guy on there, he says, yeah, he says, this stuff happened. He says, I started praying. I'm thinking, you should have been praying all along. But that's okay. He started praying. Good. <laughs> Good. But the verse doesn't end there. Oh, we want to pray. When bad things happen, we cry out, Oh, God. Oh, God, touch our president. Oh, God, touch our military. Oh, God, save our country. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a second. The praying thing's okay. Oh, God, I'll pray. Oh, pray, I'll pray, pray, pray. But wait a minute. Let's just kind of cut that page off right there. Turn from, no, wait a minute now. I'm, my ways aren't wicked. I wonder if Is, is the, the, the world, is the, the nation is praying. I wonder if the pornographers are saying, oh God, forgive me for having exploited women and children to make a dollar and, and, and polluting the nation with filth and pornography. Oh God, forgive me for that. I wonder if the CEOs of major multinational corporations are saying, oh God, forgive me for exploiting slave labor overseas to make a pair of tennis shoes for 10 cents and sell them over here for 150 bucks. Oh God, forgive me for doing that. I wonder if, I wonder if they're repenting of their sin. I wonder if the abortion doctors are saying, oh God, forgive me for, for so long making all this money off of, off of you know, uh, killing babies in the womb. Oh God, I'll, I won't do it again. I wonder if the ACLU lawyers are saying, oh God, forgive us for wanting to take the Ten Commandments off the walls of the school. Forgive us for wanting to take prayer out of the school. Oh, I wonder if people are turning from their wicked ways. We're praying. Everybody's praying. And that's good. But oh, that we would turn from our wicked ways. I love America. Please don't misunderstand me. I love America. But America needs a revival. America needs a cleansing. America, I, I wonder if, if, the, if the moguls of the entertainment industry are saying, oh God, forgive me for uh, putting pornography at prime time and, and doing these things and, 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 and mocking you in every, in every turn, in every way. People are saying, God bless America. God has blessed America abundantly. And America has spit in His face. Somebody might be thinking, I should have went to the church down the block. <laughs> but it's right. We are reaping what we have sown. This isn't the first judgment to befall America. It's been going on for years now. God has been doing little things. And that's the way God does. He'll send little judgments. He'll send little warnings. And he'll send prophets with a word to say, get right with God. And he'll send little warnings. And some people will, well, maybe will get right. And it'll change their lives. And, but the world will go on. If you look at the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, they did the same thing. They, uh, in the book of Judges, they, oh, they were worshiping God. Then they'd go to worship other gods. And God would send an oppressor. And they'd cry out. And God would deliver them. And they would go back to God for a while. And then go back to worshiping uh, other gods again. And it was like a revolving door. It was like a, a merry-go-round, a, a roller coaster, up and down, and up and down, up and down. And every time God would deliver them, they would thank God for a few years and go back. And that's what's been going on. And the judgments got worse and worse and worse. And we're seeing this in our nation where it's come to this. We're in the very heart of our nation, our chief city, the very center of world commerce. God has showed us what He is able to allow to happen. In just a couple hours. One hundred and 10-story buildings, 1,300 foot, a quarter of a mile tall, toppled to rubble. Not by an atomic bomb. Not by a major world power. But by a few religious fanatics who are upset over the fact that we are involved in a 4,000-year-old property dispute. If my people 
which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. There is hope for America. But the hope rests. The hope rests in repentance. The hope rests in repentance. We need a nation to repent. Not just to call on God, but we need a nation to repent. He says, Now my eyes shall be opened and my ears attentive unto their prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and ever. And mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. As for you, he says in verse 17, if you will walk before me as David your father walked and do according to all I have commanded you and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, there shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots of... Uh, out of my land that I have given them. God made very clear his conditions. I want to read one passage of scripture and we're going to close. And if you get time today or whenever you get a chance, go home and, and get your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 18. But I just want to read this this morning and we're going to close. There's a hope for America. And the hope is in Jesus Christ. Whether this nation will repent and turn, I don't know, but I know one thing. We need to take this message because when God really sends His judgment full scale, there's not going to be any, any reprieve. There's not going to be any escape. This is just a picture of what is to come. Look at what he says in Revelation chapter 18. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hole of every sp foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. When he talks about Babylon, he's not talking about the city that was destroyed so long ago over there in Iraq. There's a place where Babylon used to be. But he's not talking about a city. He's talking about a system, a world system of economy and religion. Everything that exalts itself against God's precepts. Listen to what he says. For all the nations have drunk of the wine and wrath of her fornication. And the kings of earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The center of world commerce. The center of world economy. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive none of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. Look at verse 7. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she has said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God which judges her. God gave us a little picture. Brother Don pointed out the other evening that this happened September 11th, 9-11. It's good to read verses 9-11. through 11. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is your judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. Those World Trade Centers were the home of over 250 companies from 40 different nations. Destroyed in less than an hour, in just a couple hours, toppled. You see, God wants us to be aware that He can do whatever He wants. 
And he's, he's warning us. He's telling us. And I know we weep for those who were lost in those buildings. And I'm sure that the, 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 the torment of, of, of those who have lost their loved ones. Oh, we, we weep and mourn for them and pray for them and all these other things. But listen, when judgment comes, oh, it just, it just flows everywhere. This is a picture of the judgment of God. Make no mistake about it. America must repent. You could have the biggest bombs. You could have the best military. You could have the greatest soldiers in all the world. But if God is against you, you will fall. Now, I believe our nation will obtain victory from this. I believe it will. Everybody's praying. Everybody's seeking God. But I, I hate to say this, and I dread to think this, after it's all over, after the victory is won, after the Ben Ladens and, and the terrorists are all dealt with, I wonder if the prayer will continue. I wonder if we'll take our flags down then and the signs that say, God bless America. I wonder if then we'll begin to, to say, okay, God, we're, we're finished with you now. Okay, we'll, we'll see you the next time we need you. That's not the way God works. He wants all of us. All the time. We need to pray that the people in this nation would repent of their wickedness. Turn from their wicked ways. That's what we need to see happen. As for me, I'm not concerned. You know, I'm a believer. I put my trust in Jesus. If somebody would drop a bomb on New Kensington right now, I know where I would go. And you need to have your faith in Christ that no matter what happens, you're going to depend upon Him. I want everybody to understand that. We have a hope in Christ that goes beyond anything the government can do or that the United Nations can do or any kind of coalition can do. Our faith is in Jesus and we have a hope in Him. But for our nation, we need to pray for repentance. We need to get back to God as a nation. We need to see prayer back in the schools. We need to see the Ten Commandments back up on walls. We need to see a public acknowledgement that there is a power greater than us. Father, we thank You for Your Word this morning. And Lord, we know the terrible tragedy that has struck this nation. And our hearts go out to those ones who lost their loved ones, Lord, in this senseless tragedy, Father. And we pray that, Lord, through the ministries of churches and believers, Lord, you will minister your love and grace to those who have suffered so much. But Father, we know it says in your word that the reason there is suffering is because there is sin in the camp. And Father, we ask you, Lord, for our nation. We entreat you for our nation, for those people that dwell in wickedness in our nation. Father, I pray that they would repent and turn from their wicked ways. Father, for people in the churches, people in the body of Christ who are just going along for the ride and who are just, who are just playing the church game, Father, help us turn from our wicked way. For ministers and preachers who are just uh, treating it like a job and they're just, they're just going about their business and don't really even care about Jesus. Father, help them turn from their wicked ways and become believers and followers of Jesus. Help every pulpit be filled with men and women who are on fire for Jesus Christ who are preaching the Word in truth and sincerity and the power of the Spirit. Help the church rise up from the ashes and become the, the bearer of good news to a lost and dying generation. Use us to tell somebody who's afraid. Tell somebody who is concerned about the future. Use us to give them the good news that they don't have to be afraid, that they can put their trust in Jesus and that they have a place. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. That while we're on this planet, we can pray and to live as Christ, but to die as gain. Father, help us take this message that, that we, we need not fear terrorists. We need not fear men who could kill our bodies. But, oh Lord, let us go forth with the word, the truth of life from the word of God. So many people need to hear. And in a time like this when people are, are afraid and when people are concerned and when people don't know what's going to happen, now's the time that we can go to them and say, we have the answer. We understand what happened. We understand why God allowed this to happen. He wants to get this nation back to Him. Let's take that message to a lost and dying world. And let's go forth in faith, not in fear, not in terror, but go forth in faith. Knowing Jesus and His will for our lives. 
praying for those men and women overseas who are going to be fighting this battle, praying for our president and vice president and our Congress and, and, and the, the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Oh, God, touch each and every one of those men and women. Give them wisdom, Father. Let them seek you. Draw them into the kingdom if they're not there already. And let them seek you as they go forth to defend our nation. Father, establish righteousness in our nation once again. And we'll thank you and praise you, Father. In Jesus' name. And everybody say,